I don't think we have an Islamophobia problem. We have a free speech phobia problem. Um, I don't think that it should be illegal to engage in, quote, incitement to hatred, unquote, in and of itself. That is to say, people are, ought to be allowed in a democratic society to hate as well as love. Um, and they ought to be allowed to think very badly of other people for just about any reason uh, in the world. Now that's something different in my view than incitement to violence. And sometimes the same speech will be both. But, but I think we have to be very careful uh, when we talk about concepts, legal concepts, such as uh, uh, laws designed to prevent incitement to hatred. Now it is true, as the last speaker correctly observed, that, that in the area of what I'll call hate speech, there is a different European uh, and American approach. Indeed, there is a uniquely American approach, which is shared no, nowhere else uh, in the world, so far as I know, in terms of the degree of protection uh, we afford uh, to, uh, quote, hate speech as well as other speech. When President Carter signed uh, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, he annexed a reservation saying that uh, this would not uh, give uh, authority uh, to any state or the federal government to pass any law inconsistent with the Bill of Rights which is a way of saying in polite diplomatic language, uh, thanks but no thanks. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll do our best, but we're not gonna pass laws aimed at speech in this area. Now one line on why I think we think about this a little bit differently. First, or two lines. First, we do have a different history. Europe has been ravaged by the results of certain types of speech um, and, uh, and Europeans much more than Americans saw that speech when it was being voiced uh, and, and understood and understand the potential dangers uh, of it. Um, uh, from an American perspective, I think we are more concerned not about taking away someone's right to say something interesting, we're more concerned about giving the government the power to do it. Uh, we're more concerned about entrusting to Congress, entrusting to the courts, entrusting to any government entity the authority to say that speech, that particular speech, is so offensive, so beyond the pale, so inherently threatening that we will not allow it. Uh, I mean, from my own view, uh, uh, we allow the protection of hate speech, as in the Skokie case, not because we think the speech has any value at all. It is not valuable, and it is, to some degree, dangerous. We don't want government involved, though, in the decision-making process about what's valuable, what's dangerous, uh, how to uh, strike a proper balance. So sure, uh, on the outskirts, uh, we will say, uh, yes, uh, incitement to violence with the intent that there be violence and the likelihood that, that there be violence, <coughs> sure. In that sort of case, we'll say uh, it can be banned, <coughs> but just about, just about nowhere else. Um, and so I view it as our being willing to pay the, the price of hate speech, not getting the benefits of it, the price of hate speech in return for avoiding the dangers of government intervention into this very, very uh, uh, difficult and, and fragile area.